We're talking about row counting today. If you're like me, you have, at some point in your knitting, had an issue with how to count rows in your knitting, how to keep track of them, how to know when your next cable cross is coming up, how many rows you've done between your cable crosses, how many rows you've done in your pattern repeats, um, how to measure an armhole depth when you've got a curved armhole shape and you're supposed to measure straight up from that armhole indent. It's all very confusing. It's hard to know what you're looking at. If you've got any kind of texture or fuzzy yarn or anything, um, you don't know how to count, how to get those stitches counted. I can solve that for you. It was solved for me when I took a class from Stephanie Pearl McPhee and she taught me how to use running markers. They're phenomenal. <laughs> I can't say that strongly enough. Running markers are the way to go. You don't need anything. You have what you need on hand and you can use them in all of your knitting. You can use them multiple times, as many times as you want to track as many things as you want. I'm Nicole from the Nicole Knits Under the Influence podcast. And this is my very first tip jar tutorial and it's on running markers and if this is interesting to you something you want to know about and trust me you need to know this uh, follow along with me and uh, let's dive into how to do running markers now if you i'm going to talk to you a bit about why you want to learn to do running markers um, if you don't care <laughs> why <laughs> You need to use running markers and you just want to know how to do the running markers please uh, use the chapters down below and jump yourself right over to where I start the how-to with the overhead camera doing my hands so you can see what I'm doing um, I will not fault you for that because I don't know how many times I've opened a YouTube tutorial on knitting and the person goes on to talk about whatever it is they're talking about for 10 minutes before they show how to do the thing and all I need to know is to see how to do the thing to remind me whatever. So anyway, go ahead and jump to the chapter where I start the how-to. First, I want to explain to you about running markers and why you need to learn to do running markers. They will change things for you, I promise. Here's the thing. Traditionally, there's all kinds of ways to count your rows. With running markers, you can count across stitches, which is particularly handy for cast-ons, and you can count rows, and you can also keep track of shaping. Increases, decreases, you can keep track of pattern repeats, like cabling, like I used a ton of running markers when I was knitting this little baby there's a lot going on there was shaping and cabling and row counting and all kinds of stuff happening at the same time so you need to keep track of that somehow uh, the way i initially learned to keep track of it was to make little hash marks on my pattern so i go one two three four cross one two three four cross on my pattern page so i needed a printed pattern in front of me i needed a pen and I needed to make sure I remembered to do it on every row. Um, that's the hard part, right? And that's the thing for any of the row counting tools that you might have. So these little guys, these guys that sit on the end of your, yeah, I'll blur me so you can see that. These little counters that sit on your needle, if you're using a straight needle and you just turn you turn the little dials at the end and you turn it from one to two to three to four and you just click it each time you do a row. Okay, fine. It's on the end of your needle. It's not going anywhere. Um, you're not going to lose it, maybe, <laughs> until you take that needle off and it drops onto the floor and rolls away. And then who knows what row you're on. Or the dog or the cat grabs it and runs off with it and you never see it again. Or you know, an owl flies through your window and picks it up and flies off with it. Like, you know, this seems to me kind of like it could easily get lost. Also, you have to remember to click it every row. <laughs> you just have to. It's something you have to stop and do is click the thing. So forget that. Then the other kind 
Okay, because nobody uses, well, I shouldn't say nobody uses straight needles anymore. I'll get mail for that. Fewer people use straight needles now. <laughs> Most people use cirques. And so now they have this, uh, I happen to have this one sitting around. This is a row counter, a combo row counter and, um, and marker. So you could place this at the beginning of your round or the end of your round or between your rounds when you're working in the round. Did I say round enough times? And, uh, but again, same deal. You have to remember every time you come around to turn it and make sure it stays turned to the spot that you turned it to. You can't accidentally brush it, throw it in your bag and it gets rotated all on its own and then you're lost. And also you can only count one thing at a time with this. So really you can only count your, your row count or you could count, you could choose to count your repeat of your cable chart or your lace chart, or you could use it to count the number of increases or decreases that you've done, but you can't do all those things. You can only do one, maybe two, if you use the numbers on each side independently and you remember which one you're using for what. Forget it. I'm tossing that one out too. Bye. And then there's fun things like this. <laughs> so I have had this for years and I never even took it. You see, it's still on its original packaging. It came in a yarn box at some point and um, I looked at it and went, okay, this is nice. So you can apparently like set these little arms to the total number of repeats or rows or whatever you need to do. And then you can move you move these notches around um, until you get there. Uh, there's three different colors, so you could track three different things at once. Um, yeah, okay, you can hang it, I guess, from your needle, it's pretty heavy, it's metal. Um, you can hang it from something. But again, you know, you've gotta remember which of these is which, and you gotta remember to do the clicking, and if you put this away, any of these methods, if you put away your knitting and you don't come back to it for a month, three months, six months, a year, two years, more, because I'm pretty sure that's happened to you. <laughs> I know it's happened to me many times. And then I'm trying to figure out where am I? Um, so this is probably not going to help you. You're going to look at this and go, okay, um, which one was green and which one was pink and which one was gray and one was the shaping and one was the rose and I don't remember and I didn't write anything down on my pattern and now I'm lost. Okay, so this isn't going to help you either. I, I as fancy, well, I, you know, okay, I don't want to be, I don't want to be overly opinionated about this, but I think running markers are better. This may be helping somebody out there. One of you out there may have this and love it and think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. More power to you. I think that's great. You do what works for you. If you're here, I think it might be because you're getting frustrated counting rows. Another tool that I had for counting rows back in the day was one of those, it was like a little white, almost looked like a cribbage board. It had pegs and holes and it was divided into four sections and you could count rows in one place and you could count increases and in shaping and decreases in another and then pattern repeats and things and you use the little pegs. And again, you had to remember to move the pegs every time you did a thing in your knitting and uh, the pigs would fall out and they'd get lost and it wasn't very portable. Um, if you threw it in a knitting bag, of course, the pigs would fall out and that's it, you're done. Okay, all right, Nicole, get on with that. What can I use to count my rows that's actually gonna work? Well, guess what? This is what you're gonna use. You're going to use a little strand of yarn. <laughs> any strand of yarn pretty much that you have lying around that is a different enough color from your knitting that you can see it. That's what you're going to use as your running marker. 
I keep a little cup of ends, of yarn ends. See, I love this little cup. This is a little plastic cup that I got somewhere that says, Sip, Sit, Knit. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> I love it. And uh, I just stuff it full of various, I've got some light colors in here, some dark colors, various thicknesses. And when I need a running marker, I pull the appropriate thing out of here. You really want your running marker yarn to be relatively smooth. It doesn't matter what fiber content it is. And you want it to be enough of a contrast to your knitting that you can see it easily. Um, but you want to be careful if you are knitting a light color, like say you're knitting a little booty in white like this, um, that you're not going to use a dark red or a dark blue or something on that white that could um, could rub off and bleed color into your work because I often will leave my running markers in even when I block something and wash it um, just because I need to check it against another piece and you know I have reasons I don't always take them out before I block things so uh, and you never know when something's going to get wet it happens. <laughs> you, you can spill your martini <laughs> or your wine. I mean, these things happen, people. <laughs> you know, um, you might have like a really, really big martini glass <laughs> like, like this. <laughs> and um, yeah, you might spill. So, uh, but let's, let's not conjure that up, shall we? Okay, so this is what you're going to use, a strand of yarn. And here's how and why you're going to use it. Here's a practical example. This is something I'm knitting right now with running markers in it that I can show you how I use them. So this is a sweater I'm knitting. It was knit top down from the neck down and you can see it has a cable down the front and there was some neckline shaping happening here. So over here are my running markers. I'll just stand up and get closer for a sec so you can see. So this set of running markers over here is counting the repeats of my cable. So I could keep track of each time I needed to twist that cable. So every one of my cables are perfect because of this running marker. This running marker down here was keeping track of the increases in the neckline. So this running marker was flipping back and forth every six row. The cable repeat was 12 rows, so I knew after two flips I did the cable twist. This running marker is keep, was keeping track of every fourth row, because every fourth row is where I was doing an increase for this neckline. So I could have put this down, which I did several times, and pick it back up and I'd be able to tell exactly where I was because I could see, I could count 10, 20, 30, 40, or you know, one, two, three, four, six repeats and then however many rows I had from there, I'd know exactly where I was in the pattern. And then I could carry on from there. I could find my spot on my chart or my pattern and away I go. It, uh, it makes it really, really easy. I'm going to switch over now to my overhead cam so that you can see my hands and we'll talk about row counting and what you are counting and where and that magic question, does the stitch on the needle count as a row? Okay, so see you in just a minute from the overhead cam and I'll show you how this goes. All right, here we are, knitting in hand, and I'm gonna show you how unbelievably simple it is to use running markers. I've already got one started right here. So this is where I first drop the marker into place. I knit five rows, I flip the marker to the front, I knit five rows, I flip the marker to the back, and now I'm just going to knit up to the spot between two stitches 
This is where you're placing your marker. You're putting it between two stitches, so in the crotch. You just take the marker, and right now the marker is in the back. I've done five rows. I'm going to flip it to the front. So you want to know, well, how do you know, Nicole? How do you know you've done five rows? Here's how I know. If I pull these stitches apart, I can see the strands of yarn that run between those stitches. Each strand of yarn represents a row knit. So starting just above the last flip of my marker, I've got one, two, three, four, five, and now I'm going to flip my marker forward. And then I just carry on knitting. Now you can see, for those of you who are wondering about that magic question, does the row on the needle count? Well, yes, it does, because my fifth strand is the row on the needle. See that? Here's that strand that's pulling up the stitch on the needle right here. They are attached to each other. So yes, the strand on the needle will be, or the strand in between will be the strand, or the loop on your needle. Sorry, I'm saying strand too many times. <laughs> okay, and then I just keep knitting. So this is actually now I've just knit the first row above my last set of five rows by coming across this way. If I want to drop a new marker in, I just knit up to the point where I want to drop the new marker, find the crotch between two stitches, take my new marker, and I always like to use a fairly long length just to make sure I have enough, and you're going to split the marker, your strand of yarn, into about half. You want about half of it to the back of the work and half of it in front of the work. Um, the longer it is, the less likely you are to accidentally pull it out of your work. That can happen. I won't tell you it doesn't. That would be a lie. It can happen, but if you keep it quite long, that is a lot less likely to happen. So you just drop it in place and start knitting. And then all I do is I just keep knitting back and forth and back and forth. And then every couple of rows, I'll, I'll pull my two stitches apart and take a look and see how many count the strands in between and flip my marker back and forth if I need to. And that's it. Now you can also use the marker horizontally. We that's I've showed you how to do it vertically, but let's say we wanted to count the stitches across. So let's say we want to count five. So we've got the marker there. We'll go one. We've got one stitch there. That's two, three, four, five, and then we're going to bring the marker over horizontally. One, two, three, four, five, and we'll bring the marker back horizontally. And now I can quickly count my stitches across. Five, ten, fifteen, ta-da! Just like that. For cast-ons, this has saved my life. Okay, let's pretend we have to cast on 250 stitches and you know how hard it is, especially when, with certain, whoops, that was a sloppy cast on, with certain kinds of cast ons, particularly like Italian cast ons, um, which are very, you know, like this and they're very hard to count. Um, using a running marker is brilliant because all you have to do is drop the running marker at the base of your next cast on, work two, three, 
four, five, and then flip it back to the front. One, two, three, four, five, and flip it to the back. And just keep working back and forth like that. And then when it comes time to count how many stitches you've cast on, you're just counting 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, etc., etc., until you've got your bazillion rows. You only have to count once. Seriously, it's the greatest thing <laughs> since sliced bread, if you ask me. <laughs> okay, so that's all it is, folks. That's all it is, my friends, is just, sorry, the needles are making a racket. Um, it's just flipping a piece of yarn back and forth between two stitches as you knit up your rows or flipping it back and forth between two stitches as you knit across your rows. That's it. Those are running markers. Okay, um, we'll go back to the full video now and I'll explain how you can use running markers to make your knitting absolutely perfect every time without measuring. Alrighty, let's go. Okay, I just want to talk to you for a minute or two about how you can use your running markers in place of measuring your work every time the pattern tells you to measure your work. It's much better for you and way more accurate for you to find your row per inch count from your washed and blocked swatch. And I know you're cringing right now. I'm gonna do another tutorial about swatches and I will change your mind <laughs> about swatches. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was in the no swatching camp or the tiny swatching camp for a long, long time, but I'm going to tell you, maker friends, swatching is a game changer. If you, if you swatch properly, your knitting, your crochet, your making work will improve drastically. The quality of your work will improve drastically. I'm just going to say that for now. That's a little promo <laughs> for the swatching tutorial. Okay, so what you do, this is it. You've got a swatch, you've knit yourself a swatch. You're gonna measure, everybody, everybody measures and finds their gauge by their stitches. Everybody does that. Most people ignore their row count, but I don't want, I want you to stop ignoring your row count. I want you to start measuring it. So it's better to do this, like I'm doing this over an inch, but really you want to be doing this over a five inch swatch so that you can count four inches worth of stitches, divide them by four and figure out what your row count is, your rows per inch. So let's say your rows per inch are five. In your knitting, you're getting five rows per inch. And let's say, you're knitting a garment in pieces, at least from the armhole up to the shoulder, and you do your armhole shaping, so you're, you're binding off four, and then you're binding off two, and then you're binding off one, 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 and then the pattern tells you to knit straight until your armhole measures X number of inches, say eight. So, what that means for you is if you're getting five rows to the inch and your armhole needs to measure eight inches before you start doing your shoulder shaping, you need five times eight, you need 40 rows from where you started that armhole shaping to the point where you're gonna start doing the shoulder shaping. Measuring is fine for one side, <laughs> you're going to measure one side and get eight, you know, say, okay, I've got eight inches and away you go. When it comes to the other side, you're going to measure and get eight inches and you may or may not have the same number of rows on that side. Same with the backs. Um, measuring is inaccurate. You know this for a fact. I know that you know this, <laughs> that the, your measuring is inaccurate. Row counting is accurate. So what you're going to do is 
kind of the opposite of what I did here. You can see I was coming top down. Well, you can also do it top down if you've got armhole shaping top down. Is as soon as you start your bind off at the armhole, you're going to drop a running marker and then you're going to every five rows flip, 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 flip till you get to 40 and then you know to bind off your shoulder. So you're going to do that on this side, on that side, on this side of the back, on that side of the back, and all of those measurements are going to be exactly the same once you have washed and blocked and put your garment together you'll have exactly the same number of rows and you can easily keep track of those rows and keep track of your shaping and keep track of your patterning all at the same time by using a different running marker for each you can put a different color in for each one if that makes it easier for you mine usually those are different numbers changing you know like my five by five by five is my row count um, my shaping count is going to be different. It's not likely to be every fifth row. And um, what was the third one I said? And then whatever my pattern repeated is, is also probably different. Um, so I don't find a need to put different colors in, but if it makes it easier for you, you can put different colors in for each one. And away you go. And again, like I said before, you can always come back and know exactly where you are with all three of those counts you can find your place easily because you can just go boom 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 i know how many rows i've got i know how many how many shaping repeats i've done i know how many pattern repeats i've done i know where i am in this pattern repeat i know where to cross that cable i know where i last crossed that cable all of those things you're going to know them and it if you mess up and you forget to flip or you flipped in the wrong place, it's really easy to pull these out and pull them back in. You're just gonna count the courses between the rows and move your marker with a little crochet hook poke through and pull it in, pull it out. It's easy to move it to correct your count. All right, did I convince you? <laughs> Are you all keen to get in there and use running markers instead of row counting all these other ridiculous ways? Throw them out, you don't need them. Uh, pick up a strand of contrast yarn uh, and away you go and um, yeah don't let row counters run your life let running markers run your life okay run your knitting that's a terrible motto <laughs> anyway thanks for being here um, if you got value from this or learned something or enjoyed this in any way, shape, or form, please um, click like. And uh, if you have a YouTube account, subscribe to me if you haven't already so that you will get notified when I upload new content. You're not obligated to watch. You're just going to get notified. So I uh, hope to see you soon over on the, on the podcast, which I do every second week. And I'm going to be doing these tutorials on the opposite weeks to the podcast week. So I uh, hope you had fun and see you soon.